Bonjour. À... So, good morning, everybody. Oh, am I a bit too far away from the microphone? So the work that I'm going to be presenting to you concerns the tribological aspects in relation to the road pavement service. This work was done originally with LAMCOS, LAMCOS that are specialized in contact, notably in the mechanical industry for ball bearings and that kind of thing. And so we decided to work together so that we could show an interest specifically in this question of road pavement surface behavior. It's quite an unusual subject because normally it's something that we look at at a smaller scale. Here we're talking about a large scale approach, as is the case in lots of road pavement surface analyses. I would argue what you need to keep in mind um, when looking at this study, there are other international studies that have been performed. They are often gas factories because they use 3D elements to enable us to fully understand um, how the tyres and the uh, pavement roads interact with one another. We decided that our design approach is, is one that often means that we're, that we're looking to enhance the lifetime of the road pavement surface. But we don't tend to look at the surface layer because the surface layer um, is basically a very thin layer where we then look at potential deformations, but we don't study it in detail from a rheological perspective. As we said earlier, in the observations, a certain number of things were said. If you're on a roundabout, we talked about roundabouts earlier. There are fatigue phenomena. We can confirm that. That is definitely the case. We can even go one step further, and we can start talking about rutting when there are high temperatures. Of course, you've got the rutting aspect that is going to be particularly relevant. But here we're talking about temperatures um, where you have damage, top top down damage or infiltration, what I would call top down cracking. So these are the different um, aspects that I'm going to be focusing on. So the top down cracking in English in the text or rutting, depending on the temperature, this definitely requires very refined knowledge um, about the contact point because because you can get shearing due to compression due to excessive traction of course we start out with the theory in other words the point of contact lamcos has developed semi-analytical software that makes it possible to analyze this contact, this point of contact. And so for this specific study, we took into account the properties of the materials, uh, the tyres, the in other words, and also the road pavement from a broader perspective, um, because we'll look at the multi-layer aspect a bit further down the line. This also needs to be taken into account if we want to guarantee the precision of the results. As you can see, there are a certain number of issues or study parameters. Um, we cannot just look at the rolling course. If we do that, we'll have the same information as the information you've already got. Yes, we know we'll get cracking, cracking on the surface, um, but we'll have cracking um, a lot further down the line, a lot later than the top-down cracking that we're able to perceive very, very early on. And so we're not going to learn much about the rolling surface and the impact of the rolling itself. That being said, there are areas where acceleration takes place, areas where there are braking. There's also the corners that the vehicles go around. And we can have um, criteria for the, crack, the cracking that need to be taken into account. And I would say that this is very important for the road pavement so service life. And sometimes the damage can be such that it begins by the surface layer and um, before it goes deeper. It will be a lot quicker on the surface area than on the base course on the on the surface area. Sorry, on the structural area. So this is what we were able to look at during certain simulations with this software. OK, so how did we proceed? Here you've got a few pictures on the screen that show you uh, that we're able to analyze the tires. Of course, 
we necessarily have to have a good a good understanding of the tyres, and also a good understanding of the macro texture and the micro texture of the road pavement. So you need to have images relating to the two surfaces. Um, in other words, the tyre and the road pavement surface. And all of this data needs to be entered into the software. And then we're able to obtain results in terms of pressure, vertical pressure due to the contact. And of course, above all, what we're interested in is having the criteria concerning the mechanical fields. In other words, the initial centimetres where you have uh, the point of contact on, on the sur surface course. So, initially speaking, we were able to well and truly validate the results obtained by the software. Hence, we performed a comparison of the pressure um, using a sensor developed by TechScan. We were able to check that the whole system worked and that it worked well. Unfortunately, we can't currently check the shearing stress on the surface because we haven't found any sensors that are capable of doing this. However, we are very good at um, checking vertical pressure, the normal pressure, as we call it, from the contact between the tyre and the pavement and the road pavement service. If you want to see the information in detail, if you want to go deep down, you can look at this slide that I personally perceive as being very interesting. You can see that the SAM software is essential from zero to five centimeters in depth because basically if you look at um, the images, you're able to see how useful they, useful they are. If you look at the surface area, um, the first picture, you can see a gap. Um, between the ideal situation and um, the situation whereby we need to intervene. This is the major advantage of this software. If you have an operational approach to the design of the surface, of course, you need to be able to analyze the surface in this way and see the rutting and the damage at a very early stage. And you can see it thanks, thanks, to, this, thanks to this data, and it gives you the opportunity to then do all the forecasting work. Just a few pictures as well of the different slippage zones, the wear zones, the rubbing zones. You've got the different um, rubbing conditions. We've looked at the tire grip at the front of the contact point and the slippage at the back of the contact point. I didn't say this earlier, but in the laboratory, what we're currently doing is carrying out our third thesis or PhD study. Deborah is on her third thesis, and she's going to look at probabilistic aspects. Because as you'll see, these wonderful photos um, with red and, and blue, blue being under the tire, it all illustrates that necessar necessarily there will be shearing at, at some stage. And it all depends on the positioning on the tire. So you can do a lot of probabilistic studies in order to achieve very reliable um, operational results. But we do have a deterministic model that is very precise. And that, I would argue, can serve as a basis for the work to be done by the probability specialists. Here on the screen now, you can see a picture that gives you an idea of the shearing surface. It's the Epsilon 6. We performed calculations with the Epsilon 6. I'm not going to go into detail on that. No point, really. I know that everybody is very much in the know as to how this functions. This Epsilon 6 that corresponds to the deformation after 1 million cycles for cracking. As I said, it enables you to see the shearing surface. It's in between the stripes of the tires that there's an issue. Um, and you have the number of microns. We're able to see the red, red zones. It doesn't amount to very much. Nevertheless, it gives us a very good illustra illustration. It's a lot lower than epsilon 6. And um, it's a long process. And the hypothesis is that the tire always rolls over the same area, so we we don't get um, we don't get damage instantly. Next, I wanted to show you what we're heading for. 
we have um, concrete type damage that we analyze, we consider that it's the maximum main deform deformation field per surface extension. This is the Kachanov and Mazar theory that um, has been used by those who are specialized in the concrete sector. And we do work in the concrete sector. OK, it's a bit viscoelastic, but fundamentally speaking, um, it's concrete. And we're looking at low temperature cracking. So the issues that we're up against are very similar to those of the concrete sector. Hence, we can draw conclusions potentially on how cracking behaves by studying concrete and by using these kinds of cal calculations with their criteria. What you have on the screen here is the illustration that you have the surface shearing that occurs. This is for when vehicles speed up, for when traction occurs. And here you've got epsilon t that amounts to approximately 170 micronefs, not kilometers, and hence these values, the epsilon t value, is very similar to the known values that we have for epsilon 6. So these are all issues uh, that revolve around 1 million. Once again, of course, it's if we apply the load to the same place, which um, needs, needs to be taken into account. So it's what we can provide from a deterministic perspective. And let me stress that these calculations are very quick. You can do them very quickly, so they're very practical. Uh, Deborah could talk about the speed. She's able to perform calculations on this on a regular basis. I know that it's very quick, but I can't give you a specific value pertaining to the speed. Here you have the case where you have braking on top of the rest. Um, and this is where we're able to establish the potential zones, the potential areas where damage will take place. And next, we focus on the bend, because as you can see, there's a slight bend, a slight bend on the tire. And this is where you have the strongest uh, deformations. And I believe that on roundabouts, this can be a very useful application because if there are longitudinal cracks, I personally uh, am convinced that um, it's not just due to the the binding on the, on the uh, road pavement service. There are some roundabouts where there are no joints, no binding. It can be due to the tires. It can be due to the, be the bends. Um, it can be due to the mechanical stress. As we said earlier, it can be the due to the aging of the the road pavement as well. But there is mechanical stress because here, as you can see, the deformation is quite considerable. We're not even talking about shearing here. The shearing, of course, occurs as well when you take into account certain criteria. Here we're just talking about basic extension rates, and this generates traction. Here, this is just a summary of the different epsilon levels that can be compared to epsilon 6. And this enables you to see that when you have pure movement and then when you go to unusual places with braking acceleration or um, curves, then potentially it can have an impact on the pav pavement road surface and the damage that is made to the surface. Or if you look, up, look very closely, you don't necessarily see the damage on the surface. The tribologist might want to call into question what I'm saying. It can be a few millimetres or a few centimetres under the surface that you, you have the most stress or the most damage. It can be just below the surface, very close to the surface. These are just a few photos to show you that um, in the laboratory we have a traffic simulator and we've carried out a certain number of uh, real-life tests. Of course, 
guaranteeing that we pass over the same uh, portion all the time. We don't have a sweeping approach. And what we're able to do is evolve how the damage evolves, the damage that we produce on the surface. We've been able to do this with Yamina Badu's PhD or thesis. And here the conditions were such that we had rutting. At the end of the thesis, we tried to place ourselves once again in conditions whereby cracking would occur. But in fact, we didn't achieve many results at all. All of this, of course, is very much related to the temperature. So I would say that one specific feature, unusual feature of this machine, is that we attempted to control the temperature so that we could perform our tests. And in fact, what we did was manage rutting efficiently, but we weren't able to test the temperatures, what we call the cold temperatures, because we don't have any cooling possibilities, apart from waiting for December or January, whereby we'll be able to open the doors and have a lot colder temperatures that potentially will enable us to um, see cracking um, or min min minor, cra minor cracking. So within the scope of this specific thesis, of course, we placed a certain number of sensors uh, close to the tires. The first one, 60 centimeters away from the wheel. This enabled us to check that we had exactly the same deformations with this method as with SAM. But at 60 centimeters, that seemed very consistent. Then after that, we put a sensor between the two twinning wheels just below just below the two wheels we stuck the 10 centimeter gauges and this we were able to see the advantage of the sam software because it enabled us to establish the deformations depending on the type of deformation that we saw we were then able to assess the right deformation values, notably in between the twinning. There were a certain number of comparisons. There was SAM, Visco Root, Alize as well, and then the measurements. All of the measurements that were correlated for the viscoelasticity, um, we had good symmetry for the signals. Everything was fine. SAM is worked upon by Yamina in the experimental in the experimental part of her uh, thesis, and then we also worked with the Lamcos to develop the SAM code that is appropriate for uh, road pavements, especially multi-layered viscoelastic uh, road pavement surfaces. So that's what we have in the twinning approach. Here you've got the viscoelasticity, then the measurement was performed. And then you've got two calculations here, elastic calculations. So you can see that we're working in the same field for both. Next, this is just a few centimeters. We had a four centimeter surface layer because we particularly show an interest in the surface area. Um, problems can come, for example, from interface behavior and also um, from the materials used for the binding. And we now believe that it's going to be possible to start looking at what happens with uniform idealized loads and also contact. The materials were cold materials and also um, warm asphalt. So by way of conclusion, I think what you need to note above all is that this software, SAM, is very good for providing reliable surface calculations for the tire or the road pavement contact. Um, in particular, if you add the probabilistic data, and I hope that Deborah is going to be able to do that work within the next two and a half years, that way we should be able to have a road SAM that will enable us to fully understand how the road surface can be damaged um, at different temperatures temperatures that correspond to this pathology, because of course there are lots of pathologies that also bring about 
deformations on a permanent basis. We have a project to develop this as well, uh, this work with the LAMCOS, but it will be a lot more complicated. And we will need more theses in order to be able to do so. Do so. Thank you very much for listening.